Hello and welcome back to the Body Surf Podcast. We are here at Seal Rocks. Do you want to do the joke or should I do it? Seals Rock. <laughs> plural. <laughs> you know who does pluralize a lot? Uga. Uga. He loves, loves adding an S to things. We've got a few uh, audience members here. Uga's not in attendance. Poor form from him. He's got a T. April's made him a T. Oh, that sounds nice actually. Yeah, what, what, what was it? Peppermint licorice, yeah. It's actually, I've got into teas lately. Yeah, me too. Mm. I had one uh, for breakfast. <laughs> I had to boil it on like a little pot. Yeah. I wouldn't survive on like a reality TV show. We are at Womp Camp. Uh, didn't we mention that? No. Oh, we're here at Womp I don't Camp. Think so. I don't you think you so. can probably hear the brush turkey in the background. Yeah, that's right. It's but all going on. No beers for breakfast, Timmy? No, I cracked one. What time was it, Woodo? Probably around uh, 10. Had my first beer for the day. Mm. You were about to go for a swim. Yeah, two beers and swim. That's a good combo. Someone uh, almost drowned out there. Yeah, we did. We saw the Westpac rescue <laughs> helicopter fly over. They're doing a bit of backburning as well. So, yeah. um, mate, mm. you never know in the big city. Well, that's right. We actually had to be escorted through uh, the, the trail by the uh, fire brigade. And uh, we were actually f- uh, followed by a few ambulance because uh, someone got bit by a snake. Really? Yeah, got bit by a snake. They're going to uh, the hospital to get the, uh, you know, the old venom sucked out of them. Wow! But also, someone all did did drown, and two surfers uh, saved him. What today? Yeah, he's been looking for who whoever rescued him. He's coming around with a case of beers to share with uh, the good That's Samaritans. Intense. Yeah, yeah. I've been sitting in the car, mate, <laughs> and all this drama's happening. But what what are the surf conditions like here, are we? Well, we went out this morning. I didn't go out this morning. You suckers went out this morning. But it looked it looked okay. Uh, I went out a little bit later. Uh, big swim. It was a big swim. And uh, the waves are okay. It's about five to six foot. Um, gradually gr- grading down. Uh, but I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. It was a big swim, though. I, I thought about turning around at one yeah. point. But I didn't. So... Um, yeah, hopefully tomorrow when the wind goes offshore. That's what happened last time at Walton Camp. I, I remember the last day was a lot nicer and mm. people were like, should I try and beat the traffic or should I have a quick surf? And mm. I think tomorrow a lot of people are going to be jumping up nice and early and getting into the water. So hopefully uh, that's something to look forward to. But what's happening right now? We've got um, someone all the way from Newcastle has made the big trip. How long is the trip, John? Well, it was about an hour and three quarters for us with traffic. <sighs> That's a nice little drive. That's really nice. John Watson joining us on the podcast uh, from what are you called? It's a new. It's a new body surfing crew, and uh, I think you formed about a year or two ago. Is that right? Well, I'm actually not in. I the didn't think he was in the stocker, mates. Ooh. Where are you? Like, do you have any notes at all, Tim? Like, do you do any research on no. this for this program? Just because he rocked up today doesn't mean he's a stocko wamper. No, I saw you here last night. Yes. You were here with your yeah. son Nick, and I uh, oh, see. Well, I don't even know what's going on. But what we should say is that we get people on the podcast, Tim, so we can get to know them too. So you've got to ask leading questions. Don't don't spit things out that you don't know what's going on. I, I just assumed. You're from Newcastle and you're a body surfer, so you know why aren't you in the crew? Is there something controversial going on there? No, nothing of the sorts. We've <laughs> actually just moved to Newcastle oh, in the cool. last 12 months from uh, Singleton, so it was opportune that the Stocko boys have actually set up adjacent to where we are, so yeah. uh, it won't be long before we're over there jumping in with those guys Good um, stuff. after this weekend. So you moved over from Singleton. I'm guessing not a lot of surf, not a lot of beach action there. Did you used to do a bit of a commute? Definitely. So for a long time, probably about 10 years, we were driving down to Newcastle or Port Macquarie or whatnot to uh, yep, chase waves. And uh, it was one of those things where we'd get to the beach sometimes and blokes would look at us and go, what are you jumping in for? And we said, well, we've just driven an hour and we're not driving <laughs> home until we get wet. So. so even if the surf was bad, you thought, oh, we've driven all this way, we're jumping in. That's it. Absolutely. That's it. So what were you doing in Singleton? Well, I work in mining okay. uh, up in the upper, in the Hunter Valley, yep. still involved in that, but now uh, based in uh, Newcastle instead. Now, you're having a cold, frothy one right now, That's but from the Hunter region, did you get on the wines much? Don't mind a Shiraz every now and then, so <laughs> that's probably uh, one of the signature wines, but yeah, that's probably something I don't mind having a tipple at from time to time as well. Very nice. Now, when did you uh, actually start body surfing? Probably kicked off when I was about 19 or 20, so I'm mm. 51 now, and, and I kicked off with a Taylor's Mistake hand plane, and I've still, really? still got that. So Is that how long they've been around? They've been around a long time. <laughs> wow. And uh, and I didn't uh, probably body surf for, you know, on and off for a long time, and then actually when my son Nick 
was uh, getting into early high school, I was really keen for him to get uh, used to the ocean. So we kicked off again and had an old pair of manta fins and a <laughs> tailless mistake, and that's what Nick kicked off in. And, and my first hand plane in his last seven or eight years is, was a garage reaver hand plane. So uh, that was really what kicked me back into it. So ever since probably Nick's got to the age where we're keen to get in the water, that's what's really yeah, driven this whole bloody fascination with body surfing and... Uh, I think my wife sort of thinks I'm a bit too keen for it sometimes, <laughs> but, but yeah, I love it. Nice. And did you take a few years off? I mean, you said you started when you were about 19. Um, was, there a, was there a bit of a, a lull in, in the love of body surfing uh, for a while? Probably just life and career got in the yeah. way of that mm. and spent some time in Broken Hill for a while and Orange, wow. so we're a fair way away from the beach yeah. then and really moving back to Singleton, which was probably about 16 years ago. Mm. That's what really sparked the... I guess the move to get back into the water again so and it's really just generated from there mm, and you've been in mining pretty yeah, much the whole time pretty much my whole career wow yeah yeah so you've you've moved back uh you've got i'm we're in earshot of the ocean yeah. I'm, I'm driving straight back there and for us it's i mean i grew up most of my life i i've been within mm. a five minute walk of the ocean yeah. and uh as I've said before on the podcast, I um, I didn't pursue bodyboarding. I didn't pursue surfing because it was it was too expensive for me when I was mm. growing up. Um, I guess for you, John, did you did when you were a grom? Um, did you kind of was that similar for you, or did you um, did you just have other people that you looked up to body surfing? What was the go? Look for me, I suppose. I, bo- I had a boogie board as a kid, yep. and uh, I was pretty keen on that. And then I sort of grad gravitated away from that and into body surfing mm. and then really it, it's probably been the last seven or eight years for me and and it was you know watching things like on youtube mark cunningham all those videos you see out of hawaii or fred david and and those guys and the thing that really i guess set a seed for me was we went to a, the duke Hanamuku day at uh, freshwater yeah and i just got the garage uh, the reaver hand planes off dave and um there was a body surfing exhibition on that day and Mark Cunningham was at that session and all of a sudden the world of what body surfing could offer and actually seeing people mm. do it in, in real life and Russell was there, uh, Captain Cook, man, just to, and I didn't know these blokes at all at this mm. stage, but to see the types of manoeuvres on some fairly ordinary waves on that day to what they could do, it just went, wow, this is something that I really could get into. and. The other part that I really enjoyed on that day was seeing the guys up the back, Sting Glide and a couple of others making hand planes out of uh, Polonia, and I think, oh, actually, that looks pretty good as well. So that sort of started a whole other hobby in, in, you know, in association with the body surfing in the water as well. Well, tell us a little bit more about it, because I think every, well, not every man and his dog, but everyone who's body surfing has some sort of craft that they've either made themselves or yeah. they, they, they have dreams of eventually getting in the, in the shed and and making a hand plane something like that we've even seen uh one of the maroubra body surfers has a hand plane he made out of an old flipper um everyone's got something inside them who's a body surfer wants to make something and ride it and share it with people tell us a bit more about your stuff john so my passion started small and has grown to the extreme where i was starting to make hand planes and the first ones that we dabbled around with were out of pine and then we moved on Mm. to plywood and and then I saw this thing online for uh, online, uh, sorry, uh, one day workshop to make a hand plane with Ricky. Yep. And again, that was a bit like watching these guys in the water. Going to that one day course was like, holy dooly, there's a whole other way of, of being able to shape these properly. And then that spurned a whole you know, different range of creations that I've made to the point that when we've moved to Newcastle, I've specifically got a workshop made in the back, backyard that's essentially for making watercraft. Oh, how good. <laughs> mm. The workshop with Ricky, I always see it as like a really great present. Like you go and, and make a little memento that you can tell everyone, hey, I made this. But for you, it sounds like it launched some creativity and you were able to take what you learned on that day and take it back to the workshop. So since that workshop uh, you, you did with Ricky, what have you started doing in your own little shed? What sort of stuff have you been making? Oh, look, I think it's most... That it was understanding some of the theory around how I was shaping previously so for instance the noses of the hand planes that I'd made before I I was just mucking around making them more like the front of a boat 
But when they slowed down, they started to push water, and I didn't really understand about shaping that nose, so we had better water flow you know, through the nose and then into the concave through the back of the plane. Mm. So I think just le- understanding those nuances and I guess um, you know, copying someone or, or, or trying to use that as imp- inspiration, I guess, is a way of sort of showing how, I guess, you respect the work that they do and being able to... Um, you know, create something that's slightly different, but based on what I've seen, uh, you know, and I've shown Ricky ones at times, and he's, you know, I think he's been impressed, but, <laughs> you know, to the same degree, I, I, I look at, you know, what I've learned off talking to Dave and Archer and, and Ricky, that those types of people have, you know, in, helped me improve what I like to do just for a bit of fun. Which it's a great. bit of a mad science, isn't it? <laughs> oh, it certainly is. That's you right. Really, you really get quite into it, and, and when you're crafting something like that, and I don't have a lot of experience in it, mm. but... You're right. You want to try and you always want to try and make it better. And you're learning. You're oh, constantly right. um, seeing things from yeah. from different angles. And you're you're taking people like Ricky um, Garage. You're taking yeah. all the different angles on how they they craft their hand planes. Try and put it into your own work. Do you think you'll go commercial with her, or is uh, it just a bit of a hobby? It's just a hobby, mm. and um, <laughs> sold a couple, but it's mainly just a hobby. And I probably need to sell a couple or give a few away because I'm starting to build up a bit of a collection. But it's yeah. it's um. Yeah, it's just a good way to you know, get rid of stress if you're not in the water and you're still associated mm. with the water in a sense that, you know, looking at smooth lines, concaves, you know, imagining how these all, all work in the water. So it just helps that connection. If you were to go commercial, <laughs> have you thought of a, a company name? I haven't thought of a company name, but I do have a logo. So <laughs> <laughs> What's really? the logo? Yeah. Well, it's like a little shark head. So Yeah, nice. Yeah. We like the sharkies. <laughs> we're all about the sharkies here. Now, you've got... One logo you've got on right mm, now, yeah. DMC. Yep. So, uh, what's in your floppy bucket? So you've got your obviously you've got your own hand planes, the sharks. I, I feel like you're sharkies. kind of showing us all your cards right yeah, now. Yeah. You've got all the gear. You've got the DMC mm. hat on. You've got the garage yeah. hand plane shirt on. But it sounds like you've experimented with a lot of different gear. So what? Are, yeah. What, are, what is in your floppy bucket? I actually kicked off with the fins this second time round, and I've actually moved to the DMCs I just find them a bit more comfortable for my foot and I have less hassle with the cramping so have the DMCs I've usually got either a garage hand planes either the Reva the Barrel Monster or a Go-Kart mm. and then I award Badfish is one that I've, I keep and then just usually one of my own selection as well so they're the main ones that the, I uh, the war uh, wood hand plane that you made yourself yes. what sort of design did you go with uh, it's uh, the fish sort of okay. shape, so yeah, yeah. and um, fairly similar to to the Ricky to Ricky's template, but um, yeah, it was uh, the, the concave is sort of a bit shallower than in the ones that I make, but mm-hmm. um, yeah, no, it's pretty good. When when we eventually do the workshop, I wanted to try and get a fin going on <laughs> one of the one of the custom shops uh, because I've used the uh, the go kart yep. from Garage. And I'll, Jesse's got one, and he's got a little fin on the bottom. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, and good. so my little piper that I've made, I, I went and put a fin on it. I love how it, it cuts yeah. um, down the down the face of the wave. Um, what do you like to What do you like to use? Do you use the fin on the go kart? Yeah, I always use the fin. So yeah, it, yeah. But you're right, cuts in nice, holds a great line. So mm. I really enjoy that, especially when it's a bit bigger and it's easier to swim with, and yeah, really tuck in nice. Because what I've found with a few of the other bigger boards that don't have the fin is that I end up sliding out yeah. on the yeah. b- on the bigger waves. I slide down the face of the wave. So, with your custom ones, the sharkies, yep. uh, do you do you incorporate a fin, or is I, it more rails? No, it's, and it's all rails. So yep. the rails are pretty sharp on the sides, but and a fairly hollow concave through it as well. Because mm, that's interesting. Like for someone who was maybe listening to the podcast and they they're thinking about doing this thing themselves. Yep. Mm. Uh, so much of the the shape of the the bottom of even the the shape of the hand plane itself, mm. but it's so that little tweaks can just change something so much. Mm. Think of the the Benway that we got custom made. It's got seven channels, yeah. in it. and I think I used it once before we <laughs> gave it away to Layla, who won the competition. And that thing just it, it had four a quad fin and seven channels. That thing was just like lock and load. Yeah. You go straight. Uh, I like somewhere in between. Yeah. So with the with the wall fish, I kind of like the a little bit of the slide I get because I, when I've compared it to the Benway, uh, that has the the fins, uh, it's a completely different ride style. So uh, I found with the Benway, I couldn't actually slide down and lock into say a bigger barrel. I had to 
uh, I I had to kind of lock across the fa- the top of the face and was getting myself into bad positions. So Timmy, you've actually got a yeah. couple here, do we? <laughs> the concave that right. is insane. <laughs> wow. So yeah, that's one that uh, is shaped based on the bula, and then that's uh, one that's my own shape. But you can see the handles that are or the, and the straps are from mm. uh, from war. Yeah. Yeah, that's the concave. So I usually start with a twenty five mil polonia. Gee, it's blank. light. Yeah. And that's why I take a fair bit out of that concave and, and yeah, focus on getting that water flow through the nose as well. And you're able to just get your straps in as well? Like, yeah. Do you, do you uh, just buy a few of them at a time? Yeah, yeah. So I usually buy, you know, five or ten sets from Ricky. And <laughs> yeah, no, they're great. Oh, good. And you've got a few pipos over here. Yeah, so we've just been mucking around too with some six and nine mil uh, ply. So the one that Wolfo is holding, there was this old bloke at Noosa a couple of years ago playing round on one. And so, anyway, we mucked around making the shape <laughs> for that as well. And You're then, buying one, Wolfo. The EP's here. That's and a then, mini boog. Yeah. And then I've got another one there. That's it's a chopping board, mate. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a cheese platter on it later. <laughs> the one that Nick's holding, it tends to rip pretty well, especially if it's a little bit smaller. Oh, but yeah, it yeah. flies, that one. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah we, that's we, good. We often don't have a lot of pipo chat on the podcast. <laughs> but um, For good reason. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit controversial. But I did see Barrel Pig, Jake. He was going out this morning. He had a big SDS bodyboard bag. Remember when you were a kid, you used to get a free... <laughs> Free bag when you got your, your flippers and your boog. He had that full of pipos, and he said, anyone wants to come down and have a go? Yeah. I, I worry about pipos, about paddling them out, especially in sort of choppy conditions. Mm. I'm not sure how he went. He said, bring a leash. Yeah, what's the go with the with the pipo wipeout? Because oh, look, the thing is, I'm, the one thing I'm worried about is getting smacked in the head. Yeah. So it's just, I'm yeah. trying to hold onto it to not lose it, mm. but just keep it as far away as possible. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's what I'm worried about, because Jake's come over with the guy Bush, Butcher, the piglet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, that we can have a go of. Everyone can have a go of. And in the bigger surf, I'm, I'm a bit worried yeah. because I've copped the, the hand plane in the head. Yeah. And it's, not, it's not fun. <laughs> so I'm just imagining what a big piece of wood like that would, is going to do to you. Exactly. That's why I still ride the Grom. It's uh, very forgiving. A bit of foam yeah. in the face. Never hurt anyone. But uh, <laughs> these things, yeah, they could take out an eye. That's yeah. for sure. So you've got to be careful. But um, I want to have a bit of flipper chat. You, uh, you you spoke about being a, a boogie boarder starting out and uh, riding the Manta blades. Your so favourite fin. I think they're, they're probably the most uncomfortable fins going around. <laughs> um, I, I'm not sure how they went for power. I don't really remember them being... They were, they were probably okay, but it sounds like you've flip-flopped around. You, you've tried the Defins. You've tried the DMCs. I, there's always this debate going on in the back of my head over comfort over power. And um, where have you kind of found a, a middle ground? Yeah, I think that's why I've leant towards the DMCs because uh, I pump bloody a stack of magnesium into me, but I still have hassles with cramps. So yeah. as much as I like, you know, using the the defins when I can, I find that I can have much more time in the water, and I guess stay efficient with the DMC. So uh, I think yeah, think making that change is certainly help me enjoy and or prolong my time in the water so that's really the main reason why I've changed and you know in terms of power um, I find them you know fairly comparable they still have a bit of a kick yeah and uh, 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 not many people from DMC do uh, sorry from Defin listen to the podcast but oh you have a prototype of very soft DM uh, Defins yeah the soft Defins well they're Corey's I can't say that they're mine because Corey got them in Hawaii (laughs) Uh, and they're soft foot pocket, yeah. But unlike the Mark Cunningham's, where the blade is actually the same as the the normal defins mm. on the Mark Cunningham's, uh, the fin is also soft and flexy. Uh, and I wasn't a defin guy mm. before using these fins mm. because I ha- had the same problem uh, with cramps and and things like that. I, I actually actually don't mind very rigid fins. I came from Vipers. Of all mm-hmm. things, and if anyone's ever worn vipers before, they know that it's just it's not comfortable at all. Uh, but the softer fins I've, I'm really liking, they are very similar to uh, the DMCs in a way. Uh, I mean, you so you get the same flex, but at the end, like if you look at them side by side, they're completely different fins, and you're yeah. gonna get a different ride style out of both of them. I, I really like my DMCs, I've got the zebra uh, colored okay. ones, which are fun. Uh, but my go-to at the moment has been the defin, the softer fins. I, I, might, I might change. 
I might but, go back to. But I else. heard Defin are not going to release these. Yeah, well, that's I don't what under- I've heard I don't well. understand that because it seems like a no-brainer. These things would go off. They may be more expensive to produce. Yeah, okay. Who knows? Uh, because you're using two different so- types. Like you've got the the soft foot, but then the the hard. Flipper. Well, that's it. You. <sighs> yeah, I I don't know how crazy that the guy who owns Defin is because if you look at if you look at Yucca, for instance, he does like he does all <laughs> super soft. Extra soft, hard, rigid, normal. Like he, he is a scientist behind <laughs> it, and I'd love to. I've never ridden uh, yuccas, uh, but I'm really keen to have a go and see how they compare. Um, with I guess the two big fins in Australia would yeah. be DMC yeah. and Defin. Yeah, absolutely. Have you still got the uh, the Manta blades? No, unfortunately, we took my sis, uh, sister, my daughter, body surfing uh, just after Christmas a couple of years ago, and she uh, was the unlucky one to snap one while we were in the oh surf. So oh no! <laughs> so we've still got the other one at home. Yeah, but, hanging up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, that's nice. Now, uh, Instagram is a, a great place for us to yep. all come together as a community. Uh, you've got one of the OG Instagram handles. You're the official Wampa Stompa, spelt with an E R. Yep, that's as uh, you know, a Womp Camp legend, Daryl, who is uh, also Wampa Stomper with an A, that's it. Um, isn't here this year. But uh, have you guys have you guys officially met? Yeah, we did last year actually. So this is the fifth year we've been to w- oh, Womp wow. Camp. So yeah, last year was the first year, and we sort of went, oh, okay, Wampa Stomper. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but um, I guess for me, that was where we met. Yeah, you know, this whole community of people was was through Instagram, and it really started. You know, and it, it led to the trip away to the Mentawis last year with Dave Archer and yeah. Jake and Caps and Kookman. And, and when I reflect on having the opportunity to do that, it's come out of, you know, being part of this Instagram community that, that's, you know, formed around body surfing. Mm. So it's just been yeah, fantastic. And how was that trip? Uh, I, I really, I, I saw all the pictures, all the videos. <laughs> I wanted to be there. Look, probably uh, when it came to the abili- ability wise, I was probably ranked around. 10th of the 10 that went but in terms of the surf quality it was probably not as good as it could have been but uh the group of guys that we had that went yeah it was a really good band uh, good fun the people that we stayed with who ran the pit stop hill um resort or camp area where we stayed were fantastic looked after us superbly tried to get us into the you know the best spots possible um it was just an amazing uh amazing trip really it was fantastic that's nice. Now we're here at Womp Camp. Uh, this is your fifth time. That's it. Uh, did you did you go for a surf early this morning? How'd you go? Look, we did. Nick and I actually went for a bit of a scan up towards Boomerang. Oh, did ya? I, I how did it go? Up. Well, we didn't actually jump in there. I was sort of feeling a bit fragile this morning, so we ended up <laughs> just uh, taking in the pipos back at Seal Rocks on the way back in uh, back into the camp for treachery. So anyway, it was good just to get wet and yep. have a crack. So. Keen to get out the Savo and tomorrow to finish off the weekend. Oh, lovely, lovely. Yeah, I wouldn't mind checking out this afternoon. The, the tide looks like it's coming in and yeah. maybe filling in over the top of those outer banks because it was a big swim <laughs> this yeah. morning, Tim. I, as I said, I wanted to turn around. I've only turned around twice in my entire body surfing career and that was I was pretty close there <laughs> because I thought I'd, I'd, I'd take the rip out. There was I'd, a good rip, yeah, yeah. there was a good rip and I thought I'd go a little bit left and then I'll swim across into it but I kept just getting funneled into yeah. the into the corner. It was the wrong decision so tomorrow if we get in on the high I'm just hitting the reef, hitting the rip straight out the back. Now you've been coming here for a, a long time, five years. What's your biggest Womp Camp favourite moment? I reckon just watching Belly at night, you know, and unfortunately we miss him this year, but just the entertainment that he provides and, uh, you know, he's, his dad coming along cooking as well and I think just he encapsulates, you know, the whole sort of mad craziness of what this group of people are like and, you know, it's, it's, it's great to, you know, he dragged everyone, drags everyone into the, the entertainment as well. So, yeah, that's probably it. And I guess for me, because... I don't tend to body surf with a lot of people at, at times when I go out. To be able to jump in the water with a whole stack of body surfers and have that you know, collegiate atmosphere and people just pushing people along, I, I really love that. That's mm. probably the thing that I remember the most. Tell us about a time where it got sketchy out there. You tend to, you just said you surf by yourself quite yep. often. I, I hate surfing mm. by myself. Like, I'll, 
even if the surf is pumping, I really resist getting in the water by myself. And it's going to be hard eventually if I go on travel around Australia and you're yeah. seeing good waves from spot to spot and you're by yourself. Uh, yeah, tell us about a time where it got a bit hairy. <laughs> it was actually, it wasn't so much from swell size, but uh, we went up to the Byron Bay Surf Festival this year and I don't know if you can remember in February around that time, it absolutely flogged down rain on the East Coast and it happened to be the first weekend of our holidays. On the way back home from Byron Bay, we stopped at a couple of places along the way and we had a couple of nights at Sawtell. So I jumped in the surf there. Water's still a bit chocolatey. Anyway, it's about 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning and I out the side of my eye, he's a fin. And it's like, <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and then not long after that, and it's like, so I've gone from instant terror to instant relief in about a second and a half because there's like six other fins with it. And it's all dolphins, mm. but it just, yep. it was that one moment of like, oh, oh it is, it's, such a relief. it's insane when, when you just see one out the corner of your eye. Yeah. And I, I've had an experience where I've had pretty much a full breach of a dolphin right where you're yeah, sitting yeah. Uh, and no other notice of anything else. And just the sh like grey in your face. Mm. I had an outer body experience. <laughs> it was just, it's crazy. We even had it this, this morning when yeah. we went out. Oh. Um, there were yeah, dolphins full breaching out of the water. And it, it's, they're still pretty scary. They're yeah. big things. I really yeah. dislike dolphins. <laughs> yeah. I, I think they're the most hideous, ugly looking creatures <laughs> on the earth. Heap slimy. And just, yeah, gross. Yeah, people love them too, like yeah. majestic things. They've and got a just, reputation though. They're not, yeah. they're not very, yeah, they're pretty gross. Yeah. But, um, yeah, uh, like probably better seeing a dolphin than a shark. I've had a very similar experience. I was swimming in the port hacking once and uh, one dolphin popped out and it, you, I didn't get that relief because yeah. it was by itself. So I thought it was for a shark for a long time. <laughs> and I was actually in the water wakeboarding and I was like, go, go, go to the boat. And then this little sick dolphin popped up. It was not well. Oh, yeah. You never see dolphins alone. No, so if, if right. you're alone and there's something wrong with it. Mm, that's yeah. true. It's been uh, cast out from the community. <laughs> but in, in Belly's absence, uh, I, I, Belly's told us to sort of step our, our act up and, and get the, everyone going. But um, I'm wondering tonight, is tonight the night someone's got to have to have a sing along? Well, we tried to have it last night. We we played the we played the song on the speaker. Oh, all right. <laughs> you know, I I don't. Yeah, you went to bed early. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't have heard that. Um, you know what? Belly is the peacekeeper of the body surfing community. <laughs> He's a bit of a shit stirrer uh, as well. We no, <laughs> we're, great, isn't he? we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna start a new um uh a new segment. And just if you can hear the turbo diesel in the background, that's Corey. <laughs> Sean and Uga just going out to catch some abalone for us, yeah. which was delicious last night. I wouldn't mind a slice of that tonight, actually. Obviously corona safe, we <laughs> all were, not uh, getting in anyone else's space. But Belly, he is the peacekeeper. And I know that he said that we should step up in his absence. I think we should start a new segment called Belly's Beef. And he just gets together two people. He can be the, <laughs> he can be the, the interviewer. And we get together yeah. two people that maybe dislike each other. I'm thinking... Uh, um, maybe a DMC and a, and a podware <laughs> or something like that, you know, and just and get Belly to, to orchestrate the thing. That would be good listening. But we need, a, we need a new honorary peacekeeper here at Womp Camp this year. Have there been any beefs here? I feel like everyone's quite civil. Well, no, I'll give you the, the hot ticket. There was a beef between Corey and young Jarrett. Uh, not, no, it didn't start at Womp Camp. It, uh, it happened prior to Womp Camp. But you know what? Jared was, he was probably in the wrong and he was man enough to go up to Corey today and he said, listen, mate, sorry about that. And Corey said, no, that's fine, mate. No worries. And that's what we've got to be more like in the body surfing community. Well, it sounds like we don't need a mediator. Someone, you know, these guys are sorting out all their issues. Well, they're sorting it out, but there's a lot of people <laughs> who also don't sort it out. So... I want to get the pressure off us, Tim, and maybe we'll put it on to John oh. here. Being the fifth-year veteran <laughs> yeah. of Womp Camp, maybe you, you can be the new peacekeeper, John. What do you think? Oh, geez, I don't know. They're big shoes to fill, <laughs> that's for sure. But you're a dad. You have a very yeah. calm, sort of relaxed quality about you. I think you'd be able to handle it. Sometimes. Better not ask Nick about that. That's the only thing. So, so you, got, you got Nick into it at a pretty early age, but you were sort of living away from the coast. Yep. Um, so were you making big trips with him when he was a young bloke? 
Look, when we were when he was little and his sister was little, we we spend time at Port Macquarie and those types of places. And the irony of it is now his older sister is studying at Port, so oh, we're up there quite yeah. a bit, uh, seeing her and visiting her. Lovely. So, and last weekend I was up there and I was jumped in the water and I was a little bit wary myself because the previous weekend, so fortnight ago, there was that lady got you know bitten by the um, shark at Shelley Beach there. Mm. Port, right. So, but yeah, look at. Um, when the kids were little, I was always keen. I grew up near the surf, you know, so I was keen to, and I and I had an appreciation, understanding of what the beach was like. And my greatest fear as a parent was that I've got kids that could catch a train to the beach, be an hour away, and then just get there and jump in and not know anything about it, yeah. and then get caught. So really, that was part of going. Well, if I can teach Nick and get him to understand, well. How does the rip work? How do the waves mm. work? What's wave selection look like? Then I've got no hassles when he's when he's bigger yeah. that he can look after himself. And now he's but he he's like you guys. You know he's just terrific in the water. You know, nice and smooth, and it shits me to tears sometimes <laughs> that he's just so fluid and nice to watch. And yeah, it's great that yeah. he's just taken it on and really you know kicked on. And yeah, he's a really good. Well, that body started sort of with you, mate. Yeah, and and I think no, oh, I love it. I really yeah. do. It's great. Yeah, and I think to the other Wampa Stomper, Daryl. He's teaching his kids, yeah. mate, about body serving, about understanding the ocean, That's and it. so you can you can send them out there. It's a scary it's a scary thing. <laughs> it can uh, and it can be the most placid, calm conditions, it. and it can get bad really quickly. Mm. And so the more of that, the better. Yeah. And uh, yeah, hopefully one day, Timmy, if we ever have children. Yeah, well, I'm I'm still learning. Barrel pigs teaching me how to swim, so uh, <laughs> I've, I've got to you know, I've got to learn before I can teach my offspring. But uh, you know, one day, yeah, one day, definitely, it's it's definitely a great trait. You know, I've I've met a few people who don't know how to swim who live in Australia, mm. and that's a really sad thing to to come across. Mm. You know, we live in such a great country. We have beaches like this all over the place. You know, you talked about Port Macquarie, one of the most uh, lovely beaches going around in New, New South Wales, but also Newcastle, lovely spot. Um, why would you not want to get in? Yeah, that's Unless right. Unless you have a massive fear of dolphins. Mm. <laughs> oh, well, that's true. <laughs> Besides that, it's so good. So yeah. and that, well, that's what Womp Camp's all about. It's about getting people... You know, this was a place that I guess was kind of like a middle ground. A lot of Queenslanders used to be able to come here, but this year, obviously, that's a real bummer that a lot of people mm. have not been able to make the trip. It's a bit thin on, and it's I'll bring it up. <laughs> Where's the, where's the Sunny Coast body serve? Like they run this show. Oh. And there's no, they're not here. <laughs> well, they had the sneaky weekend away on the official. Weekend. I know, but like <laughs> thanks but, for the invite. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, and then they redirected us to this weekend. Yeah, the surf's not as, half as good, and then then they don't rock up. Like we could literally have done it any weekend. Yeah. That's so right. why did they pick this weekend when they can't turn up? Uh, is this a huge prank? Are they hiding in the bushes? They're going to do a panty raid tonight <laughs> or something? Like, it's a bit weird. But no, one person is being represented uh, fr- from the Sunny Coast. You. Oh yeah, yeah I'm here. <laughs> and the Miso. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we're here. Now we got Ru- Rusty. Rusty, Rusty, and we'll yeah. have a chat to Rusty soon. But yeah, like it is a bit like Captain Cookman. He was our, our go-to. He yeah. was the helpline, the, the Womp Camp helpline. He didn't say one word about his Never daughter's birthday. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't going to be here. It's bad form. Now, John, just before we go, we wrap it up. Uh, maybe a word of advice, maybe a little bit of gear that you've got, something you've picked up over your history of, uh, of body surfing to, to pass down to us young tackers. Oh. <laughs> what do you tell your kids? Do you have a famous line? Do you like? Then they go, "Oh, Dad, you said." Well, that funnily to us enough, my, I, I have said it to not so much my kids, but you know, people I work with. They go, "Why oh, do you like body surfing?" <laughs> <laughs> it's like because it's always overhead. Oh, uh, it is, uh, but uh, it is. And uh, I think people look at me a bit oddly sometimes at work about, you know, what's this body surfing caper? Mm. But no, nah, look, it's it's similar to what you hear other people say. It's have fun. You know, push hard into the waves, have a crack, and you know, come out smiling. Really, that's mm. what we're. That's what it's all about. Well, we had the Groms here that uh, they've just parked behind us. You might have heard them pull up in in the van, and they we were having the bar <laughs> the the fire last night. And they go, oh. they go. So you blokes actually serious? Like you're all body surfers? And we're like, yeah, yeah. And they're like, no, no, like mm. <laughs> seriously. And we're like, no, we're like this is yeah. a body serving camp. Yeah, and they didn't. Under, they didn't get it. Mm. Well, well, like. I think of this place as a surf camp. You come here because the beach is next door and, and you can see a few surfboards going around. 
But I think body surfers outnumber the surfers this weekend. I didn't see one surfer out there this morning. I think a few of them got in later on the day, mm. but there was, what, 20 body surfers. So yeah. it's taking over, and it's just so convenient. Like, it was easy mm. jumping in the car, driving up here with some flippers and a hand plane. Mm. These guys have roof racks. They've got a whole carry-on. Why would you bother? <laughs> it Why is a carry-on. It right. is a carry-on. And I, as you said, John... You don't get to body surf with heaps of people all the time. And there's lots of people that might be in the same boat. There's a couple of guys from Western Sydney. we got Bondi. Mate. He comes down and body surfs with us every weekend. Mm. And he, it takes him an hour and a half to drive there yeah. just for the love of the sport. And uh, Womp Camp's about that. If you're listening and you've, you've never been to one, I'm, I know this year is a bit up and down with coronavirus and all the other stuff that's going on in the world. But next year, if you can get along... Absolutely, uh, I mean, yeah, oh, for sure, and that's it's great because each year you meet new people, and it, you know, like last night's a great night. Tonight's always a good night with people, and it's a good way to just you know create connections with people that you know you don't normally see or you see through a social media feed to actually you know go up and talk to people face to face. It's mm. fantastic. John Watson, thank you so much for being on the Body Surf Podcast. No worries, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Cheers.